Death Valley in defense, proving deadly for Ole Miss. Mark Rogers TV, recapping LSU's upset at home against uh, the number three ranked Ole Miss Rebels, 10 to seven, proving to us that defense, yes, defense can be thrilling as well. We don't have to have an 82 to 27 game like we saw in the Big 12 today, 10 to seven, and it was just about as exciting as a college football game possibly can be. When you just look at action on the field, hitting on the field, intensity on the field, and also second-guessing on the field and after uh, this one was over. Hugh Freeze turned himself into the Mad Hatter, but with not the same results that we typically uh, think of when looking at uh, Les Miles' career at LSU as the Tigers move on to 46-3 and at night, 46-3 and in Death Valley at night since 2005. And again, it was Ole Miss uh, trailing 10 to 7 in the fourth quarter. They had that fourth and inches play at midfield. And wow, what a defensive play by the LSU defense as Ole Miss uh, took the quick count, tried to uh, catch the defense off balance, run the play, get the first down. And the Tigers' defense was exceptional on that play, just completely smothered and annihilated Ole Miss up front, uh, specifically Kendall Beckwith and Jamaria Rasco on that play. Some, some Rebel fans, they showed them heading to the exits. There was a buck 44 left in the game. But since Ole Miss had all three timeouts, they um, recovered. They were able to get the ball back with, uh, let's see, just a buck 19 to play. So they, the three timeouts um, allowed for the offense to get the ball back at its own 25. Bo Wallace went to work, didn't have the best of nights, and it would get worse. Didn't have the best of nights, but still with the ball in his hands and the game on the line at the 25-yard line. So 75 yards to win the game, a little bit less than that, to tie the game and send it into overtime. Wallace moved it down the field, converted a fourth down play, uh, moved it to a 42-yard field goal after a nifty run with about 15 seconds left to play. So at that point, there was nine seconds left. Ole Miss setting up for a 42-yard field goal. And um, they got the delay of game penalty. Les Miles chose to ice the kicker, Wonderlick, and Ole Miss was setting up for 47 yards. But, oh, Hugh Freeze decided to put the offense back on the field. If you haven't seen it, I don't know where you've been, but this is how it played out. Again, they dissed the 47-yarder to possibly get in one more play with nine seconds left. I'm thinking throw to the sideline, get another three to four to five yards, get out of bounds. You've got plenty of time, understood exactly what they were doing there. Thinking, though, that those LSU corners were thinking the same thing so that they would uh, try to prohibit that four or five yard gain that could be crucial to that length of a field goal. So maybe Hugh Freeze was thinking the same thing. We get those LSU corners to come up knowing that we just want to get three or four or five yards and we hit them deep. But Bo Wallace made a costly decision and a poor throw of the football. He needed to throw that one to the very back pylon on the left side, and he got it nowhere near. And it was picked off by Ronald Martin as LSU pulled off the upset 10-7 to once again. Bo Wallace, uh, not good in this game, 14 of 33, two picks. Uh, it was the LSU defense, though. So let's look at the positive, the positive being the LSU defense. Jotted down some names here of some guys that were just exceptional in some playmaking ability at different points of the game. Daniel Hunter is a beast. I don't know where he's projected right now to go in the NFL draft. Uh, he is a beast. Quan Alexander, of course, who is the leading tackler for the LSU Tigers. Uh, Jamal Adams as well. Uh, we got to credit the LSU game-winning drive, even though the Tigers shot themselves in the foot with uh, miscues, turnovers. Leonard Fournette with a fumble inside the five-yard line. A missed chip shot field goal from De La Husse. Uh, the first miss for him this season. Uh, they went on a 14-play, 95-yard drive. And this LSU team that we thought, my personal thinking was that the game was going to be much like it played out. But that LSU, how could they win with a one-dimensional offense? Well, they did it because their defense was really that special on this night. And they got just enough on the passing game. 
and that just enough was the 13th play of a 13-play 95-yard drive. So they ran it 12 consecutive times, then they get the, the play action fake, and they roll to the right, and Anthony Jennings hits uh, the kid who had never caught a touchdown pass, never caught a pass at LSU, uh, at least this season, Logan Stokes, um, to put the Tigers up 10 to 7. But again, Ole Miss had two shots and and the the would-be game winner uh, of a field goal that they disdained for one more shot at the end zone to try to close this thing out and not go to overtime. And though, again, LSU was ineffective and non-productive in the red zone, they did keep the football away from Ole Miss. 264 yards rushing for LSU. Uh, the Rebels give up an average of 97 per game. So that would seem to be a huge effort by LSU, and it was. Let's remember, though, that uh, Mississippi or um, the Ole Miss Rebels have faced two top 30 rushing attacks. So they give up 97 per game overall, but two top 30 rushing attacks have averaged 180 yards per game against the Rebels. So uh, the Tigers hitting them up for 264, not that much of an aberration. Uh, LSU given up for dead in the SEC Western Division. How could they possibly play with uh, the likes of Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Alabama? And at the time, Texas A&M, after the, the Yankees looked so proficient through their first three or four games after annihilating South Carolina and a bunch of nobodies after that. Uh, LSU given up for dead after that loss at Miss uh, against Mississippi State in Death Valley, one of those few night losses at home for LSU, 34-29, a game in which they were dominated most of the way. Then they went to Auburn and were completely blown away on the plains, could produce nothing on offense against a decent Auburn defense, 41-7. I knew throughout the season, though, that the LSU Tigers just had so much talent on that roster, and this is LSU. This is LSU speed and athleticism. Uh, the quarterback play would get a little bit better at some point, unless Miles would pull a shocker at some point. And tonight was the night. LSU defeats Ole Miss 10-7. to The Tigers could still do something fairly special this season, although they certainly look to be out of the college football playoff at this point. But with the opportunities in the SEC Western Division, who knows? They have Alabama coming up in two weeks, so they've got a bye before Bama. Then they've got Arkansas and Texas A&M. For the Ole Miss Rebels, they still control its destiny. They've got Auburn coming up at Arkansas and Mississippi State. The Egg Bowl this year is in Oxford. We need to hear from you. How does this play out? Uh, the one interesting portion of this when you look at the polls is that although Ole Miss loses and Bama wins again fairly impressively, you got to keep Ole Miss ahead of Alabama. They've both lost a game and Ole Miss defeated Alabama head-to-head. So where does that stack up the teams? Well, we'll look that, at that uh, in the coming days. Right now, I'd like to hear from LSU fans, Ole Miss fans, if uh, you can recover enough to uh, shoot me uh, uh, a comment here, and then SEC and college football fans as well, right here on Mark Rogers TV.